<clears throat> okay, go ahead, Mike. Okay, so anyway, I'll just uh, briefly go over what I just did. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about what birds do you want to see and how to find them. Like I said before we started recording, I've been doing eBird since 2013 and Tim was the one who got me started during a trip at Minto Brown Island Park. And I've been doing it ever since. I'm not an expert by any stretch of imagination. There's always new things coming up and I don't work for Cornell Lab of Ornithology who's the developer of eBird. Uh, so you can go to support under help and, and it'll answer any questions that you might have. Um, also, here we are at the eBird front page and last week we covered a submit tab and how to submit um, a checklist using your computer. Also, we talked a little bit about my eBird and there was a question before class uh, about how once I enter a checklist, how do I see it after it's been entered? Well, this is a way you do it. Uh, click here on my eBird and it'll come up and you'll scroll down. It gives you your statistics. I've seen 468 species. I've given, completed 2,365 checklists. This year, I've seen 144 species. You can go down a little further on the left side here, manage my checklist. This is where you can see your checklist. Just click on it. And then you can see all the checklists that you've entered. Yesterday, I was at Sundial Bridge down in Redding, California in the Clover Creek Preserve. When you're in here and you see, you can see a long list of checklists here. Like we said, there's 2,365 of them. Uh, but we'll go back to the top and like say, I wanna know, oh, what did I see at Sundial Bridge? I can click here on the date you know, bring up that checklist. Saw some Canada goose and their recently fledged young. Mallard, green winged teal. We saw four common mergansers, a common raven, cliff swallows, they were all over underneath the bridge. Two lesser goat finches. So you can see, you can see the track you took to, we walked across the bridge and back. Again, so it's pretty nice. Uh, it gives you all the information that you need to see. So that's basically the overview of that. We also we went over where you submit. We won't go through it all now, but you go into here, uh, click on submit, and you put down where you went birding. You can either use previous spots that you've gone to. <clears throat> or find it on a map. Like if I just put in Oregon, <clears throat> it'll bring up a map of Oregon and all the uh, hot spots. You hit the plus sign to zoom in. You can see there's lots of hot spots. If I click on this near Millersburg, it'll bring out, uh, as it says down here, the key uh, the big red ones are the birding hot spots, the ones within the last uh, 30 days when it's big like this. When it's small, that means it's been more than 30 days. Here, oh, I'm sorry, this plus means there's a group, and this is a single uh, hot spot here. The red means it's been within 30 days. Here's personal locations. The little blue ones are your personal locations. So all these blue ones I have here were my own personal locations. <clears throat> and you just pick whatever location you want to go to and hit continue and <clears throat> put in your list. But if you want to see more on this um, one, you can go to, like Tim said, the YouTube and Salem Audubon Society, I have posted that um, webinar on our YouTube channel, so you can go there and see the entire thing. <clears throat> okay. Um, 
Let's start in on today. What we're going to talk about is the Explore tab and all the information you find under this Explore tab. I'll click on it. Here's some of the things you can see. Explore species, explore regions, species maps, search photos and sounds, explore hotspots. There's bar charts, alerts that you can get, target species. So we'll go through pretty much all of this and show you how to use it. <clears throat> we'll start right at the top and go to explore species. So I'm going to put in Calliope Hummingbird. Here it is, shows up, click on it. And here it will bring up uh, information about the Calliope Hummingbird. Um, you can find out a lot of information about uh, the birds you're interested in. And of course, the more information you have on the bird, the easier it will be to find the bird. And <clears throat> you can find out what it eats, where it roosts, have different photos of it. Here's a female immature photo. You can click on it and see what it looks like. Here's the uh, adult male. You can see it has these nice streaks down its gorget. Uh, a really nice hummingbird. You can see where the photo was taken and when it was taken. <clears throat> Oops, got completely, let's put that back in. And we'll go down a little further. We'll give a brief description on identification. <clears throat> you can see it has a very short tail because the wings come all the way down almost to the end of the tail. <clears throat> it's the smallest hummingbird in North America. That's a breeding species here. And when you're signed into your eBird account, I've seen the Calliope hummingbird four times. There's been 80, over 80,000 observations of the Calliope hummingbird on eBird. 6,500 photos and 63 audios. <clears throat> you can also go in here to the bar chart by a click on a region. And let's say I put in Deschutes County. <clears throat> you know, here's a nice bar chart. It looks like they're just coming in now. The frequency, you put your cursor up here, the frequency is only 3.7% chance of seeing it. <clears throat> but if I put it up here later, there's 9%, 9 9.8, 8.8, 9.9, 9.9, nine <clears throat> So it's not one you see on every bird trip, but if you go to the right places, it really helps uh, up your chances of seeing the bird. <clears throat> Here's the top photos. So they rank the photos um, according to the best photos. Here's one that Dr. James Moody, he's a teacher at Central Oregon Community College. Nice one of the Calliope hummingbird. You can see the nice gorget there. <clears throat> Here's another one he took, one in flight. Now, I hope if I go, every time I go back, it seems like it wants to start over. Um, <clears throat> so also you can see here, it shows a check mark next to this bird, and that shows that I've seen this bird. I don't have a photo, I don't have an audio, and I haven't seen it this year or else these also would have a blue check mark on them. <clears throat> There's also a range map here that you can zoom in. <clears throat> I don't particularly like this range map here. I think there's some better ones around that we can see, but the more purple there is, is the more um, that they're seen in that location. You can click and get a larger map there too. You can right here, just click and listen.
part of it here. And here's a little bit of it. Pretty soft and hard to hear. But that's pretty much it under Explorer. Let's take a more common, let's go with wood duck. But type wood duck in here and brings up the same <clears throat> information, photos of it. I've seen it and I also have a photo of it. Gives the brief description here. We can listen to it. So that's definitely a wood duck uh, there. I've had 116 observations, one photo. There's been over 2.2 million observations of wood ducks on eBird. <clears throat> of course, a range map. And let's go here, region, let's go Marion County. There's a lot of Marion County, so Marion County, Oregon. In Marion County, I've seen 98. There's been a 1,783 sightings in Marion County of the wood duck. 27 photos in Marion County and one audio only. Here you can see the weekly bar chart. So April and May and then late uh, July and August seem to be the best times. 7% chance, 6.7.9. You can see the median, the best photo was by Tim Johnson. So very nice photo. And he took this on May 26, 2019 at Minto Brown Park. A lovely photo. And there's several others. There's a female, or uh, looks like a young one. Here's one by David Craig, who worked for Lambert University. <clears throat> Actually saw it at Lambert University. Then there's audios, the top audio for it. Of course, I think there's only one audio, and so yeah, that's to me that's not a very good one of it. <clears throat> so um, there you have it for that. Now let's say you really want to get into birding, you want to know all about uh, like a wood duck. There's this birds of the world uh, thing. Now this one does cost money. It's $7.99 a month, um, $49 for a year, or $129 for three years. But if you really want to see a lot of information, let's say we put wood duck in here. <clears throat> so, okay, here it has wood duck, and we thought there was a lot of information in the other one. <clears throat> It shows there's, it's, this is of least concern, the uh, conservation status, 40 different names. <clears throat> Gives a lot bigger introduction and description of it here. Gives the appearance of the female and the male. There's a female a drawing. There's the male. Here's a ni light, nicer range map, as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> you can see here, they're year round in the valley and along the coast. <clears throat> Some of them winter down into the uh, Southwest and uh, down in Texas. 
and even down into Mexico. <clears throat> Oops, got out of it. Again. And just look at the side here of all the information. It's information on the appearance, schematics, distribution, habitat, <clears throat> diet, sounds and poke of behavior, uh, behavior, their breeding. Like if I go into breeding, it'll get into the phenology. <clears throat> when it breeds, here you can see on this little circle map, the uh, breeding cycle like the outside edge here is when it migrates for those that do migrate <clears throat> March into April it start laying eggs like May June into uh, May into June they start hatching June into July <clears throat> and then they start molting around August September so they have their first brood of the season. Uh, the wood duck is the only American duck that regularly, regularly produces two broods in one breeding season. Most of them only had one brood. <clears throat> so there's all kinds of information here that you can find out. But <clears throat> that's just to let you know that that's there and available. <clears throat> so next, <clears throat> we're going to go into explore regions. So we'll start by going to Marion County. Click on Marion County, it brings up a nice list. Here it shows 305 species have been observed in Marion County, 4,000 checklist. Uh, 2,467 e-birders have, uh, um, are here and have submitted checklists and there's 85 hotspots in Marion County. Here are the top media in the most recent and look what we have here. A, a yellow-headed blackbird that Tim put on there today. That was taken this morning, not a yes. great photo, <laughs> but anyway. But to have a, a yellow-headed blackbird this early, that's wonderful. And that was taken out of Ankeny National Wildlife uh, Refuge, Mohawk Marsh. That's, that's the marsh that's behind Pintail Marsh. So, oops. We, so, put in Marion County. So then also you can click here and I usually leave it on last scene. You can see the first bir seen birds in Marion County, spina spa and a blue bird spa, a peanut bunning. So the peanut bunning, this, uh, on February 3rd, 2021, this was the first time it's been seen in Marion County, is what that means. You can get it due by the high counts, it's a snow goose count of one. When you get down to some of the other, like a ring belt gull, there's 300 as the top count we've had in Marion County. But I normally leave last seen because I want to see what uh, birds has been seen in Marion County, and I can just go down. Oh, a box is swift was seen, five of them. <clears throat> so I can click on the date here and see the e bird list that was uh, filed in conjunction with that. David also saw morning doves, you know, just give you the other birds that he saw when he um, saw the swifts. Okay, hopefully if I go back, it won't have me start over. Good. Also, what you can do is when you're into sightings here, is, um, let's go back one more. To the main list here. So I'm going down the list. Uh, 
last scene, and I'm going down. I'm looking for an unusual bird, but, oh, here's the snow goose. So I want to know more about the snow goose. I can just click on snow goose, and it brings me right up to the site where I can find out more information about the snow goose. Now I've seen a snow goose and I saw it this year. Uh, let's go back to the... Now, as we go down the list here, I'm trying to see on the left side here, most recent visits in Marion County. Here you can see the most recent visits. You can just click on the date here and it'll take you to that checklist. And you can click down below here and you can see even more uh, list. Here's all the most recent checklist. And so let's, um, and here also um, on the side is uh, the top eBirds for Marion County by species. The top one is Roy Garrett, one of Tim and my friends, 265 species he's seen in Marion County. So that's pretty darn good that out of 305 species ever seen in Marion County, Roy has seen 265 of them. Uh, Tim is number seven on the list, 232. I'm number 15 on the list, 201. You can click here and see all top 100 eBurgers. You can also click on the checklist for top eBurgers and go down and you'll see the most checklists submitted. Here you got Leland with 13,000 checklists. Most of those turn out that he's sitting in his backyard and reporting everybody sees four or five times a day. And so that's why it's so high. But to me, the highest really checklist for Marion County would be Tim with over 3,000. Those are actually going to individual places and submitting checklists. Barbara, who's a... Um, Say the member, 1921, and I'm number four at 1289. Also, if you go a little further down, you can see the top hotspots. I really like this because if you're going to new area, we'll show you in a second, but this shows you the top hotspots. I want to see the most birds. Well, it turns out Yankee National Wildlife Refuge would be the best place. So let's say Pintail Marsh, Eagle Marsh. You can see the top three are all Ankeny. And even at the top 10, five of the uh, Ankeny spots are in the top 10. That's pretty impressive. So let's say I want to check out Eagle Marsh. I just click on it. Okay, I just... Hopefully it's gonna to go to, oh, here we go. So it will take you to Eagle Marsh, that specific hotspot, 199 species have been seen there. Here are the sightings. The last sightings here were, ooh, five snow geese and 250 greater white fronted geese and 5,000 cackling geese. And that was just this morning. But this was an ego marsh, not pintail marsh. It looks like at pintail, there wasn't much of anything. Uh, so you can just go down. Uh, I like to just arrow down. Okay, I can see on April 22nd, she saw 39 species. So just this morning, there's been a person that's seen uh, 39 species out there. Eagle Marsh, including a common yellow throat, 20 cinnamon teal, savannah sparrows, 
marsh wrens, but you can see and just go down the list and see what they're seeing at this particular hot spot. And now at this particular hot spot, the top eBirders by checklist is Tim. I'm in second and Barbara by species. Let's try to get it to change over to species. Here we go. The most recent checklist, species top eBirders, Tim, 149 species. And this is 149 species at Eagle Marsh. Barbara 127, Roy 125, I'm 116. So you can see this can become somewhat competitive. <laughs> uh -huh. And I, I really have stopped looking at those numbers because I don't want this to be about competition. <laughs> Right. Uh, but, but there's a lot of people who are, are really interested in moving up that chain. And, and there's some rewards in that, I guess, in, in being a high on that list. Um, it's just an yeah. element of what Eber can give you. Yep. Yeah. And then also, so here we are in Ego Marsh for the hot spot. Um, well, I'll wait until we get to the hot spot thing to tell you about that. But um, you can also go in here year round uh, and change the time period. So let's say I just want to know, um, I'm going birding at Eagle Marsh in May, and I just want to see uh, what they've been seeing there in May. I don't want to see everything for the whole year. So now here, there's been 132 sightings in May, and I can just see the sightings in May and late May. They were still seeing cackling goose, black BB. And some of these birds might have seen, been seen earlier in the month, but this is the latest, last time in May they've been seen. For example, oh, here's a nice one. Uh, I just saw one, a yellow-breasted chat, three of them uh, at Eagle Marsh. So that's uh, very nice. So that's basically uh, using the explore regions. Uh, next, we'll go to species maps here. Click on that. So let's say I want to find a uh, Wilson's warbler. Start typing in Wilson's warbler. There we go. I just won a regular Wilson's Warbler. And it will come up here and give you a map. You can just uh, hit the plus sign to zoom in. Keep it over here by Oregon. Sometimes you have to move the map over a little bit. And sometimes it's hard to tell where you're at. But also what you can do too is just right up here in the location part in the upper right-hand corner, if I put in Marion County. Well, that's interesting. It doesn't give me Marion County, Oregon. Well, let's say we're doing it for Marion County, Ohio. But what it would do is bring up all the sightings for that area, whatever area put in. So as you can see now, um, here's some personal hotspots, and we can tell that by the thing here. Um, so here's a little, here's a personal hotspot, and it's older than 30 days of sighting. So what, if I'm doing, if I'm looking for a current bird, you're looking for red uh, ones if you want to see a current bird. But as we can tell here, as we're looking through here, they're all blue, meaning it's been more than 30 days since they've seen the species in this area. So by just looking at this, I can tell most likely I'm not gonna see uh, a Wilson warbler 
here in Marion, Ohio. So let's go and look for different species. Let's look for Savannah Sparrow. Savannah Sparrow. Let's see if I can change this to, uh, we want a Savannah Sparrow in Oregon. Not sure what happened there, Oregon. Oregon, USA, there we go. So then it will come out and we hit the plus sign to zoom in a little. Now they're loading here, look at all the Savannah sparrows that have been seen. So I can, you can see all the hot spots. I mean, around the Salem area, but what we're looking for is the red ones. These are personal hotspots that somebody made up themselves. These are the, uh, these are what we call personal spots, and these are the hot spots. Um, so this particular one, Sour Slaw Slough. Let's go ahead and find a more common one. So let's zoom out a little more so we can see where we're at. So we can tell at Ankeny quite a few are being seen. So if I click on one of these. I can see at the Eagle Marsh Scrape Pond, they're seeing them. So on uh, April 18th, uh, they saw one. Jim Kapesky on the 18th saw five. Kim saw five on the 18th also. And then if you want to go to the bird list of that person's, click here, and it goes to his bird list. Now, you're probably asking yourself, where the heck is the Eagle Marsh Creek Pond? Uh, well, you can go up to here and click on this, and you can go and see uh, where it's located. It will give you the GPS coordinates, and you can zoom in here. So it's right along Buena Vista Road, and you can tell here's Eagle Marsh. So it's just right. Uh, down east, uh, down the road, and there's a parking lot here, and so that's where it is. And so you can use these coordinates to be able to find where it's located. You can even click, once you bring this up, click directions and get directions to it. Go back. So, okay. Uh, I mean, but there's just so many different things you can use this for. So there we've used the species. Let's go to explore hotspots. So say um, you're going to travel someplace and you want to find out more about that hotspot and what they're seeing. So let's say I want to go to McGee Marsh to look for warblers. So I can go here to McGee Marsh, Lucas County, click on it. It brings right up all the hot spots around McGee Marsh. Here's McGee Marsh itself, 273 species seen there. I click on View Details. It's working on it. There we go. It'll bring up the list for McGee Marsh. Right now they're seeing Canada goose, trumpeter swans. So as you can see, as expected, they aren't seeing very many warblers. Uh, water thrush, they're seeing palm warbler, yellow rump, but it's a little early to see um, the warblers there.
But what if I come in here and go change the date? And if I put in here May and set May as my date for McGee Marsh, because that's when I'm actually going to go there. So, okay, May, and let's see. Ooh, a black bill cuckoo. Great uh, crested flycatcher. It's a great time to go there, in fact. Oh, here we go. Prothonotory warbler, common yellow throat, American red start, magnolia warbler, yellow warbler, Wilson's warbler. All those seen on May 28th. Up bay breasted warbler, seen on May 26, chest and a sided warbler, black through green warbler. I'm getting excited now. I mean, look at all these warblers. Canada warbler, Tennessee warbler, black through blue warbler, black burning warbler, black and white warbler. I mean, you can black pole warbler, hooded warbler, northern perula. You can just see, I mean, Northern Water Thrush, which is a warbler. You can see all the different Connecticut warbler even, and a morning warbler. Those are wonderful. Those are the two Eastern U.S. gray-headed warblers. A Cape May warbler. You can see just tons of warblers at this time of year. Right in mid-May is about a perfect time to go there. But let's see, we want to go and let's say we want to explore a hot spot more around here. Let's say we want to go to Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. Type in Malheur here. Of course, there's quite a few different areas in Malheur. Let's say, find out, um, I'm looking here for the headquarters. I probably, here we go, headquarters. We'll go in there. They've seen 314 species there. Some of us are going to head over there. Okay, and so this is what they're seeing right now over at Mahir. Nothing real exciting. Northern rough wing swallow. Oh, redhead. Probably in that pond right next to the headquarters there. White faced ibis. So 49 species seen between now and April 21st. So in the last day or so, 49 species seen there. Sometimes I'll go down and so we're on the 22nd now. So the 15th would be a week ago. So I'll go down here and arrow down all the way down this to the 15th. And I can see, okay, between the 15th and the 22nd, 89 species have been seen at Malheur National Wildlife Refuge headquarters. So that's not a good, bad number. So I feel pretty confident if I go there later this week, there's a good possibility I, I could see up to 89 different species. And of course, like the other ones, it has the top checklist. Uh, the number of species seen and the same information, the most recent checklist and the top media. Now, one other thing that I didn't show you is over here, you can see an illustrated checklist. If I click on this, Okay. Oh, uh, responding. <laughs> yeah, it's slow. I see the thing twirling. Here we go. So here's an illustrated 
checklist. And what that is, it basically gives you some more information about the bird. The snow goose, we're right here, so we're almost at the end of the migration for snow goose. Uh, shows the latest photos of snow goose. If you click on here, it will show you the snow goose and the information like it shows in some of the other areas. Hopefully it takes me back to this being very slow. So you can see here, it's now here headquarters. Here we go. And you can go through and they saw Ross's goose, the greater white front it, still there. Cack and goose, you can tell they're pretty much gone. They've all gone north. A uh, lot of Canada geese around there here year round. And anyway, it'll just give you a more thorough listing of, uh, and along the edge here, you can go to target species if I click on that. Now, for me, target species, there's a, I don't know if this is quite right, but it says uh, there are 313 species I could see, um, species you haven't seen. So it'll give you a list of all those species. And if you went over right now, my percentage chance of seeing that species. I'd have a very good chance of seeing a, a red-winged blackbird or a robin. And if we go down further down the checklist, it keeps getting less and less. So if I wanted to see, for example, I go way down, my chance of seeing a hooded warbler less than 1%. My chance of seeing an aster flycatcher 1%. And the nice thing about this too is, let's say I wanted to go up here a little further and I wanted to see the towns and the warbler. I could go over here to the map and it would give me some of the sites where they've seen towns and warbler so I'd know where to go. So that pretty much explains the hotspot one. Search photos and sounds. Okay, so here you can just enter the species. Let's say we wanted a common yellow throat. Common yellow throat. It'll just bring up the most recent photos, the best photos and have them in order. So here's one photo. You can rate the photos down here, the quality. That's not a very good photo. There's sounds on here also. Here's a singing bird. That's a little, pretty nice close up. Let's go back to this one. So we can see down here, Cindy Hardacre did this just today and she saw it in Louisiana. Oh, now here's a nice photo of a common yellow throat by Jeannie McCoy. This was seen in North Carolina. This is a little bit of a far, but Tennessee. But you can go through and see all the different photos uh, of the birds and you can go down further, show more. If you wanna see more photos, you can, uh, put filters in based on location and date. So let's say I want photos from Marion County. Marion County, Oregon. Okay. And these are all the photos. There's 55 photos and three audios from Marion County all time. You could even uh, put the filter in and more filters you could put in the date, if it was singing, if it was an adult, 
uh, on a NAST. Uh, you can put the date in. I've got year round, but you could just put March through May. I don't even want to see one's photos that are March to May because, and why would you want to do this? Well, the main reason is um, at different times, they could be in different stages of moat and you want to see the bird as you would likely see it. So here we go, Graham Day, he does a lot of uh, photos and goes to Minto Brown quite often. In fact, this was taken May 1st to 2020 at Minto Brown Park. So here you have a bird that has been actually seen at Minto Brown Park and what it looks like. If I just arrow over, you can see other ones. There's the sound, Singing Bird by Graham. Tim Johnson. Tim took this one on April 15th, 2020, and a rating of a four on the quote. Um, so you can tell by this, even looking at the photos, that here's April 22nd. So most likely, if you go to Minto Brown Park now, most likely see a common yellow throat. So that's how you can search through there. You can search and say, I just want to see the photos by Tim Johnson. I could put in uh, Tim's name here. And, and there's, let's put year round instead of just, I'll just clear filters. Now, Okay, well, we'll skip that. But anyway, you can go in there even by person and pick out uh, the photos by a certain person. So I like this bar charts is one of my favorite ones. So let's go in here, bar charts. You choose your location. So I can go down here, pick. So let's say I'm going to Arizona. I'll click in Arizona. I want to go by counties in Arizona click on the counties and go down and say continue. You can pick up the 15 counties, but I know I'm going to Pima County. So I'll pick Pima, continue. The date range, I'm just gonna leave it for the whole year. And you can go through here and see all the birds based on eBird. 477 species have been seen in Pima County. And I can go down here and say I'm looking for a particular bird. I'm looking for um, a broad-billed hummingbird. So I go down to broad-billed hummingbird, and you can see it's seen year-round there. So this is a pretty good time to see it. Whereas if I was going down there to see a calliope hummingbird, it wouldn't be very good there, not seen there very often. The same with Allen's hummingbird. But if I was going to see Costa's or an Anna's hummingbird, good time. Lucifer hummingbird wouldn't be a very good time to see it yet there. So this will give you sort of a status of that bird. You see quite a few. Uh, A lot of these, a laughing gull probably is just being seen one time there. But then once you get there to kill deer, you can see it year round there. You can go here and see a map. So this is always the map uh, thing. And you see a map of uh, where they're seen to kill deer. But as you can see, they're all blue. Oh, here's some red ones. So all the red ones are current sightings. So you go in here and click on other ones. Uh, just yesterday, Renee, I saw one at the Marana um, Reclamation Center. So let's go back and make it a little more, let's go to make it Oregon. counties, and let's say I'm going to go birding in both Polk and Marion counties. 
So I'll go down and I'll hit Marion. And then you hold down, oops, I hit the wrong one, but you hold down on the control tab and then click on any other counties up to 15. So I've highlighted both Marion and Polk continue. And let's say I want to change the date range. And I want to just make it for the spring migration, March through May. So then this is going to pull up for birds that have been seen generally March through May during migration in Marion and Polk counties. So I arrow down, I want to see a snow goose. Oh, it's one of the best chances to see it during this time. I go down and say, I want to see blue winged teal. Well, you can see them, but it's a better time later in May and June, it, you wouldn't see them likely in November, December, January, February. So that's how the bar charts can help me. Mallard, you'd see it pretty much year round. The bigger this green spot is on here, the more likely you are to see it. it means the abundancy of them is quite high. Where if you just see a little line, means the abundancy is very low. And this means blank means it's pretty much no, that there aren't any there. So that's how the bar charts can really help you. Let's go back to target species. So let's say for Marion County, I want to see the target species year round for April. You can put uh, any date you want. For Marion County, based on my white li life list, show species. So there's still uh, 104 species that I could see. I have 201, but there's still 104 species that I could see in Marion County that have been seen. Now, it's interesting because if you add up the 201 and the 104, that adds up to 305, and that happens to be the total species that have been seen in Marion County. But when I go down to list here, boy, you can sure see why I haven't seen some of these. Uh, only uh, less than a 1% chance of seeing any of these in Marion County. That's probably likely why I haven't seen them. Very unlikely that I'm going to see a white-headed woodpecker here or a blue jay. So these are the, some of the birds that people, you know, they appear one time in five or ten years. And the people, their listers run out and chase them, trying to find them when they're reported on eBird or Oval. You can go and find uh, how many you need. And sometimes that can be helpful, especially at the beginning. It'll show you some places where you can go to see. Um, and here's the map symbol. You could go in, where can I see a wood sandpiper? So it's helpful in that manner. You can go in here and customize it, saying I just want to see the ones in June that I'm missing. Go here. In June, there's just 40 ones that have been seen in June that I haven't seen. So you can just play around with this and uh, can't wreck it. Oops, went the wrong. Let's go to explore a little further. Now alerts, what this is, you can set up need alerts here and subscribe to alerts. So right now you can see I'm subscribed to needs alert in Marion County, rare birds in Oregon, and what my needs are in Marion County. So how you do this is, you, for rare bird, you enter a region. Let's say I want it, I'm going to go to Ohio. And I want to view what birds I, uh, rare birds in our 
Ohio that I need to see. Well, in the last seven days, the birds I haven't seen, Trump or Swan in Ohio, it'll show you all the locations of where you can see it. Cinnamon teal, surf scotter, you can go down the list, a long tail duck. And the one thing you want to look on here is, let's say I was going to go chase some of these birds. You want to look for ones that have confirmed next to it. That means the eBird reviewer has reviewed it and that they have confirmed that it's been seen there or in all likelihood it's been seen. If you see one like this, cinnamon teal, unconfirmed, that means it hasn't been confirmed and you're taking your chances. Also, if you want to go see it, I'd go inside here to just double check. Oops, I went to the wrong spot. Um, I'd go inside, here we go, to the date, because I want to go to the checklist and, okay, Trump or so on, continuing, its mate was at this other location. But if you check uh, here in the comments, the person might say they heard the bird. Well, you might not want to go 100 miles to chase a bird that somebody just heard. You want to actually see it. So that's why some people on their eBird list, when they just heard it, they put in heard in the comments so people aren't chasing the birds if it's just been heard. Most people, I want to see the bird. So then if I want to actually go in and subscribe to this list, I just say, click on subscribe, oops, click on subscribe and it would subscribe me. The same with the needs alert. Say I wanted a needs alert for Lynn County, Oregon. Type in Lynn, click on Lynn County. Uh, you can view it first to see if this is what you really want. They've been seeing common golden eye, fox is swift, Rufus hummingbird. They've seen two, they've seen it at the McCartney County Park, Oak Creek Greenbelt Trail. All these other ones must be confirmed because here I see unconfirmed on the common loon. Oh, uh, a Western Sandpiper was seen at Talking Water Garden. So like we said, you click here if you want to see the checklist. You click here if you want to see information on the bird. Click on the bird itself, the name of the bird. Click on here if you want to see the location, information on the location. Here you can see it's right in Albany. You can get directions. And then if you want the needs alert, you can actually put it in just like above the rare alerts. Click on whatever one you want. Say you want only ones for this year only. You hit this and then sub subscribe. And then it'll show up on your under your alerts here, showing uh, which ones you're alerted to. So once a day, I get an email uh, from eBird saying, here are the list of birds you need to see and are being seen. They've been reported to eBird. Now, if you, like Tim said, if you are um, competitive, I can put in here Lynn County, Oregon, show me the top 100 for this year. And just show the top 100, the top 100 people in Lane County uh, is Kaplan. He's a student at Oregon State. He's done 174 checklists in uh, Lynn County. He's seen 173 species. Uh, there's only been 184 seen in 2021. So he's seen 94% of the species seen in Lynn County this year. Pretty darn good. The last bird he's seen is the Cassin's Burial on the 20th. 
but you can just go down here in Marine, uh, who is a um, Salem Audubon member and on the board of directors. She's uh, submitted 61 checklists, has seen 109 species in Lynn County. She's seen 59% of the species. Last she's seen Hutton's Vireo. So it's good for uh, that to see what people are seeing there, what different birders are seeing. Let's go back and see. You can see all time. Uh, if I want to go by species, oops, rank by species. But you could rank it by species and who's seen the most uh, completed checklist. You could do it all time. Who has the most in Linn County forever? Let's go ahead and check this out of curiosity. Top birds, all time. Jeff Harding is number one, 264 species out of 305. So yeah, quite a few, 86%. So that's the top 100. Yard totals, you can keep track of your yard. You can just add a yard here, and then you would put in the name of your yard and uh, the address if you want to put in the save your yard. I just put an address. Uh, I have a yard address and put it in there, and and then it will keep track. And you can just go there and see. Uh, I've only seen thirty-seven species in my yard. Last thing I saw, a new bird was a sharp-shinned hawk the other day. This year, I've seen 21 species I've entered, five this month only. So you can do that if you want to add uh, to your yard count. Here's what we call a patch total. I have a patch that you just go in here and you can add a patch. And you can name it whatever you want. And maybe you can say you just want a Kaiser area patch. Go in here, Kaiser area. Then you go in here and search by name. Uh, so let's say I want Kaiser Rapids Park is one of the ones in my uh, patch. So I go Kaiser Rapids Park, add that. I want um, the, let's see if there's any other. I want Palmacia Park here, so I can click on that. Um, let's see, I want the Willow Lake Water Treatment Plant. So, okay, I'll put on that. So anyway, so I get all my list there that I want to see my patch. I say save patch. Then when I go in here, I have Mike's patch and I have my Kaiser area. So I want to see my Kaiser area patch and see it automatically combines my eBird checklist. So lifetime in those three places, I've seen 86 species. I haven't gone and done any checklist for them this year. Last one I saw was a Lincoln Sparrow and a Greater Yellow Lakes. Uh, so you can do that with any areas you want and come in here to your patch and just see what you've seen in the last so many times. There's somebody here with a patch that uh, has 143. We're running out of time, so let's... Uh, so as you can see, they're just... We talked about this the other day and go in here and take the class eBird Essentials. We talked a little bit about Merlin ID and you can download that as an app and check out birds and ID. It has a good explore tab there. This last thing I'll talk about is the uh, photo. You can uh, make a quiz 
based on where you're going to go. I think I did this one based on, uh, <coughs> excuse me, like I was going to Ohio, a start quiz. So let's do the current look, uh, let's do Marion County here and we'll end this and answer any questions. I'm not sure why Marion County doesn't bring up Oregon. We'll put a comma behind Marion. Okay. And space and O R, and it will give it'll force it. There we go. When we'll say today, we want to see photos. You could test yourself on sounds and start quiz. I like to use a sound going to. Ohio and stuff, and I don't know a lot of the birds, and you can just quiz yourself. Uh, so um, you've got a bird here, and so you can look at this bird and you can tell, and I'll give you a list over here, which bird is this? I don't believe for here, this isn't any, I'll say none of the above. Um, well, I didn't see orange crown warbler on the list. Oh, yeah, none of the above it was an orange crown warbler. Correct. So it'll tell you up here, correct. Um, so now let's see here. I want to go to the next one. Oh, if you click on it, then it will give you the orange crown warbler. And I show you the, oops, I just went out of it. But anyway, uh, you can go in there and uh, test yourself on the different birds of an, a various area. So that pretty much ends it. And we can, I'll check the chat and a see. A couple, couple questions. Uh, Hillary, uh, Harriet was wondering when when you started eBird entries. Oh, okay. And um, do I enter these lists live or when I get back home? Um, I normally list 99% of my uh, bird list in the field. I use my iPhone and use the eBird app on the iPhone to enter the birds as I see them. In fact, tomorrow, Tim and I are gonna be doing a eBird scout uh, for uh, the Indian tribe. And we're gonna go out and do an eBird survey for them of one of their properties. And as we go out there, I just bring up eBird. And as we go, I keep track of them right there on my iPhone. Once you get used to it, it isn't that bad and it really doesn't interfere with you seeing birds too much. You just sort of learn that if you're seeing a lot of birds, you don't necessarily put them in right away. You can wait for a couple of birds you saw a robin, or you can keep going down the road looking at birds and after you see a robin and a couple other birds, then you can put them in. Um, but yeah, I put them in, record them as I'm seeing them. So okay. Then, yeah, go what? ahead, Mike. Okay, now I was gonna say, can you add them later? Yes. So uh, say I submitted my checklist. Let's see if I can go in and share. In. Oh, I killed off. Let me see if I can start it up again. And Here we go. I'll bring this up, minimize it, and let it see if it lets me share it now. Ooh, I lost everybody there for a second. While Mike's doing that, I'll invite you all to unmute. That's just voluntary if you want to ask Mike a question with your mic, but uh, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. It just makes it a little easier for you to unmute yourself if, uh, if you want to do that. And then you could ask some questions that way.
Let's see, I'm trying to get my screen to enlarge and so far it isn't cooperating. Kathy raised her hand. Did you have a question, Kathy? Go ahead and unmute yourself if you do. Boy. It's working slow. Yeah. And I think you mentioned this earlier, Mike, but when did you start entering birds in eBird? Uh, 2013. Yeah, okay, that's what I guessed. Okay, there we came up. Let's see if I can share the... Here we go. Okay, so when I'm... Uh, you can also do this on your phone, but sometimes I do it at home. I go into my eBird. I don't know why this thing is here. I'll get rid of that. And I go into checklist. And then let's say I go down to my checklist and let's say I forgot a bird in Clover Creek Preserve. I click on it to bring up my uh, bird list here. And then you can see over here, it says edit species. So I can click on that and it bring me back up to your entry area and say I saw a tundra swan. I can just go in here, type I saw one tundra swan and say save. And then that way would add it after the fact. The other thing you do here, I'll save this and not add to ten, is when you're in here, let's say I go down and I see, oh, common raven. I didn't see a common raven. You can go over here and just click remove and remove that species. When you click remove, it will come up and ask you, do you really want to remove it? And you click OK if you do want to remove it. So that's how you can edit um, the species here with an already completed checklist. And if you had a photograph or a, a recording, this is where you would do that. Or you can't do that on the phone. Here. So I click on add media, like Tim was saying, and go in here. Say I had a picture of the kill deer. Um, the thing is covering up my, let me move that out of the way. There we go. You would just click next to here, add media. And then you would pick from your pictures or wherever you saved your photo and pick, this is wood duck, but I'd just do that and say open and it would uh, upload it to uh, eBird. Yeah, so if you were doing this on your, if you took the photo on your phone, you would want to be doing this on your phone. So you right. can use that media, you can use that uh, uh, content from your phone. You are not going to find that on your computer. <laughs> and Tim brings up a good point, using your phone, and that just happens to be next week's class that we're going to talk about how to enter these bird checklists on your phone. And that will be one of the things we show you is how to share out in the field from your phone and how to sh um, add the media using your phone. I see that Harriet opened her mic. Did you have a question, Harriet? That's okay if you don't. And I don't see any other questions here. So any other questions? I lowered Kathy's hand, uh, just, but if she has a question, unmute yourself and you can ask any other questions you might have. As usual, we've gone over, I thought this was gonna be a short one, but there's so much to cover and so much information there. So any more questions? Okay, if not, well, thank you everybody uh, for attending. Uh, I'll go ahead and end the session. I will put this up on YouTube within a couple of days and you'll be able to go back over if you want to. And if you have any questions, like I said, go ahead and send me an email. So nice. get out there and use your eBird and we'll see you maybe next Thursday, two o'clock.